At this point, you will have sewn your signatures together and applied glue to the spine to adhere the thread and signatures together into one block. The materials you'll need for these next steps include glue, as usual, but also paper for the end papers. Something a little heavier than the paper that makes up the text block, and something decorative that suits the theme of your book is appropriate. You don't actually need to know what the cover of your book is yet, but knowing that will help you choose suitable materials. Once you've chosen your end papers, you'll want to cut them to size. Make them exactly the same height as your text block and twice as wide. Fold them in half with the decorative side inside, if they have a decorative side. Next, you'll glue these end papers to the text block. You only want to apply glue to a small portion of the folded edge, about one quarter of an inch along the edge. Apply the glue on a piece of scrap paper and use another straight piece of scrap paper as a glue barrier. Carefully attach these to each side of the text block. If the decorative portion has an obvious orientation, be aware of this as you place these end papers. Once you've glued both end papers, put the text block under weight to allow it to dry as you prepare for the next steps. The next step is to add some reinforcement to the spine. This is done with a material that has several names. In the bookbinding world, it is called mole or super. You can also use cheesecloth, which is available at any supermarket or drugstore. Cut the mole so that it is not quite as tall as the text block and so that it wraps around the spine about one to one and a half inches on each side. Apply glue to the spine to attach the mole. One of the advantages of using PVA glue, besides the fact that it is pH neutral, is that it remains flexible once it dries. This is an important factor when it comes to opening and closing your book. By the way, the use of this little paper cutter in the video is not important. I normally do this gluing on the edge of the table, but it was easier to video the process using the edge of this paper cutter. Press the mole into the glue. You can even apply more glue after the fact if you need to be sure it is adhering. You can do this with a brush or just with your fingertip dabbed in glue. The mole should not be glued to the end papers yet, so be careful that you are attaching the mole only to the spine. I usually put this under weight temporarily as I work on the next pieces. The next couple of steps will show you how to add some decorative elements. We'll add a headband and tailband, and also a ribbon bookmark. None of these are important to the structure of the text block, and you can skip these steps if you want. The material that I'm using for the head and tailband is specialty material for exactly this purpose, and can be purchased at any bookbinding store, such as Hollander's. You can also make a simpler version by wrapping and gluing fabric or paper around a simple cord. The ribbon I've chosen for this book is a zebra stripe. The book cover is a faux crocodile pattern, so I thought the combination would be funny. As a last element, I'll add a piece of rice paper to the spine. This doesn't really add much structurally, but it does help cover up all the various elements that are part of the spine, including the edges of the signature, the thread, the mole, the ribbon bookmark, and the headbands. First measure and cut the amount of headband material needed for the top and bottom of the spine. Also measure and cut the ribbon for the bookmark if you're adding one. Apply glue to the spine with a brush or with your finger and glue these pieces of headband in place. Add a bit more glue to the piece of headband you just added and then glue the bookmark to the spine. 
You only need to glue an inch or two to the spine to give it a solid attachment point. If your text block happens to have a particular orientation, which would be the case if you're constructing it from pages that you've already printed, then be sure you're gluing your bookmark so that it comes up and out the top of the book. Place another layer of glue over the ribbon that you just added and the tail band if you didn't already do that. And as the final step for your text block, glue the piece of rice paper or whatever you might be using for this liner in place. Press this down and let it dry. Once it is firmly attached, tear off the extra paper on each side of the spine. This doesn't have to be done particularly carefully, as the edges of this paper will never be seen. This completes the text block. Now you can use it for lots of different covers. In the rest of this example, I'm going to use it in a wrapped journal. The process would be similar if you were going to use this for a traditional cased-in book that has rigid covers and a rigid spine. First, place a piece of scrap paper between the first end paper and the rest of the text block. Using a large brush, apply glue to the entire end paper, starting under the mole first, gluing the mole down, and then apply glue to the entire surface, mole and all. Be careful not to get any glue on the spine. Wipe up any glue that might have slopped over onto the spine. Very carefully remove the barrier paper. You don't want to accidentally get any glue on the decorative side of the end paper, or you will risk gluing the end papers together. Place the glued side of the text block onto the appropriate part of the cover and press down to get a solid seal. Do the same process to the other side, being sure to place a barrier paper between the end paper and the rest of the text block. Once you have an even coating of glue, attach this side to the other cover. You'll want to put this under a heavy weight until it is completely dry, probably overnight. Before you do that, though, place a piece of waxed paper between the end paper and the rest of the text block on both sides to keep moisture from seeping into the rest of the text block. If you skip this step, you risk warping the pages of your book. If you're lucky enough to have a book press, then you'd use that now for this final step. but a heavy book or a fabric-wrapped brick will work just as well.